Oh, check that out. So there's Jupiter way up there, but look at this thing. It's the first clear night I've had in quite some time, so I'm gonna head out and do some space photography, and I wanna bring you along on that journey while I do that. So I'm gonna bring my telescope and camera so you can see what I'm doing, and we're gonna be shooting stuff like star clusters and distant galaxies. It's gonna be fun, so come along. I'm here at the Stargazer Observatory, and this is where I'm gonna be setting up. We actually have two observatories right here that we built. I'll be setting up up there on the uh, concrete pad. And, uh, you know, the weather said it was supposed to be clear, but I don't know, man. You tell me. Right now, it's not looking too great. I'm keeping my fingers crossed. Hopefully it, uh, it gets better soon. A lot of people say that they don't like winter time because it gets dark so early. I think it's great. <laughs> it means I get to spend more time under the stars. <laughs> All right, I think it's about time to start setting up here. All right, while we're waiting for it to get dark, I wanna show you what I'm working with here with the setup that I'm gonna be using to shoot space with. So if you see here, I've got a camera, a telescope, and a tracking mount. Now the camera that I use is a Fuji X-T4 camera, and you actually don't need a Fuji film camera to shoot deep space. Uh, you can use Sony, Nikon, any of the regular manufacturers uh, to shoot space with. They all are capable of doing it. And next, instead of a lens, I'm actually using a telescope. And this telescope's called the Red Cat, and it's made from William Optics. I love it, one, because it's, you know, got all the cat themes on it. Got a little cat here on the front, and a little cat symbol, a little paw print here. <laughs> cool branding on it. Uh, but also, it's super lightweight, very easy to use. And the last piece I wanted to go over is this thing right here. This is the tracking mount, and it's made from a company called Skywatcher. Now what this does is it actually tracks the stars as they move across the night sky. And that's really handy because I'm going to be taking long exposures, you know, 30 seconds, one minute, two minute, stuff like that. And since the stars actually move across the sky over time, I need to follow them. And this allows me to do that precisely. So this is what I'm going to be using here. And uh, yeah. Let's just wait for the sun to go down. We can get started. All right, it's getting dark and Jupiter is starting to pop off really nicely up in the sky. And check this out, I've got the night vision camera here. So I'm gonna record it so you can see what it looks like. All right, so here's my setup right here. But if you look over here, check this out. Oh, look at that. That's Jupiter big and bright through the clouds. It's such an imposing object in the sky because it's so bright and through the clouds, like it looks super cool. It's a really thin layer of clouds that are still up, but that's okay. Uh, I can kind of shoot through them, but it looks like it's starting to clear up, which is great. So I'm gonna start setting up my system to get ready to shoot space. The tracker mount follows the stars. Well, in order for it to do that, it needs to be perfectly lined up with that star right there. You can see it right there. That bright one, that's Polaris, the North Star. So I've got this mount now lined up with the North Star and I've done it precisely so I can have good tracking so I can take long exposures without seeing those streaky stars. We're good to go. So this bad boy here is gonna start going to Jupiter and I'll show you what it looks like through such a small 
telescope. And I'll tell you right now, you're not going to see much. Jupiter looks impressive through very large telescopes and through things with high magnification. This doesn't have high magnification, but I just want to show you what it looks like anyway. So here's my camera and that's Jupiter right there. And you can't see much, but check this out, check this out. Those are moons around Jupiter, those dots. So while we can't really get a super, super nice photo of Jupiter, we can see Jupiter, the bright thing in the middle, and the dots around it, which are uh, the moons. They're called the Galilean moons, because Galileo uh, was the first person to see them. Super cool. So there's Jupiter way up there, but look at this thing. Look at that thing. It's a super bright satellite. I'm not sure which one it is. I had to run over and get everything set up. Here we go, if I zoom in, you can actually see it moving. Just a bright satellite, and it's gonna start dimming out. Wow. That was super cool to see. Yeah, you can see already it's starting to, to fade off. There's still a couple thin clouds in the air, so I'm just gonna sit back, relax, and look at the stars, drink some coffee. Look at that, still hot. This thermos is great. Alright, so the temperature has dropped significantly. It is getting cold, but do you guys want to see something cool? <laughs> the clouds have passed, so we can actually now look at Andromeda, another galaxy. It's actually a galaxy you can see with your naked eye if you're in a dark sky spot. So the telescope is pointing at Andromeda now, and I'm going to let it do a 60 second photo. It's going to track Andromeda across the sky, and it's going to leave the camera shutter open for 60 seconds for one minute, 60 seconds. I'm shooting from like a Bortle 5 area, which means it's pretty light polluted. It's not like Vegas or New York City or something, but I mean, there's still a lot of lights on and I can't really see the Milky Way with my naked eye here. So that's how bright it is. Here we go. Three, two, one. Remember, if you're in a darker place, you're gonna see a lot more detail in these shots. The Andromeda Galaxy is one of the furthest objects you can see in the night sky with your naked eye. And also, Andromeda was at the center of a heated debate in the early 1900s called the Great Debate. And you can look it up, but in summary, they used to think that the Milky Way Galaxy was the entire known universe. But then they realized that this Andromeda Nebula, which is what they called it back then, was an island universe of its own. Pretty sweet name, Island Universe. Upon studying it, they realized that this thing is outside of the known universe, which was the Milky Way back then, and so it expanded our perspective of how big the universe actually is. Super cool stuff. Do you hear that? Don't know what it is, but sounds kind of creepy. It's off in those woods over there. I don't know if you can see them, if I can get the light to shine bright enough. But it's coming from that way. I don't know what it is. Rising up in the east, just above this light pollution dome that I see, is the Pleiades, a cool open star cluster with really beautiful blue stars, and it makes for great astrophotography. But let's take a look at it through the night vision camera. So here, I'm looking east, you can see this dome of light pollution, but rising up above that light pollution is this little cluster here, and that's the Pleiades, this cluster of seven stars and to the naked eye you can really only see six. So I'm going to do a 30 second exposure. So I'm going to take a shot for 30 seconds, leave the shutter open and we're going to see what we get. Here we go. Oh, here we go. In order to take a really good picture of the Pleiades with a telescope, you need really, really dark skies. And the area that I'm in is not dark enough to do that. The Pleiades have been a really important part of the night sky uh, for much of human history. All of the ancient civilizations who studied the night sky have mentioned the Pleiades or have referenced the Pleiades. There's even ancient cave artwork that we think is connected to the Pleiades. As a matter of fact, the Japanese word for the Pleiades is Subaru, just like the car company. And if you look at Subaru's logo, you can see that 
it's the Pleiades. You have the stars of the Pleiades as the logo for Subaru. And for a lot of cultures, when they see the Pleiades rising in the sky, they know that winter is coming. They know the cold months are coming. All right, guys and gals, it's getting cold and it's getting late. My fingers are freezing. I did not expect it to get this cold. It said it was only going to get to like 50 degrees, but I'm going to start packing up and heading out. But hey, I hope you enjoyed this video. And if you like this kind of stuff, uh, consider liking and subscribing. I'd really appreciate that. And I'll take you on more tours of the night sky. Thanks again for watching. Clear skies. I'll see you next time.